Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and oh boy, we've got a bevy of stories for you this Monday. Got six of them? This is the most amount of stories I think I've had in a single day we're talking about in a long time. So I don't want to waste too much of your time, I just will remind you we are giving away a Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky winner in the month of February. To enter, all you have to do is go to that Gleam.io link down in the description or the pinned comment. Also, we're going on a journey today. Yes, folks, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is this glorious trek through unknown territory. The middle is a surprise, but the end, the end is a, but a dream. Let's go with our first story. Starting with Pokemon Legends Arceus sales. We have our first legitimate sales update. We talked last week how pre-order sales were doing record numbers. Now we don't have numbers again yet because that's just the way it goes, but we do have an idea of how well this game is selling in the UK. This was put out on Twitter uh, by somebody in the know and it said that Pokemon Legends Arceus is the fourth best launch of a Pokemon game in the United Kingdom history. Uh, it is just ahead of Black and White and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and it only trails first place Sun and Moon, second place Sword and Shield, and third place Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. Now, it is notable all of the sales for these games are physical only because Nintendo does not provide digital data to any sales charts. I do find this to obviously be absolutely interesting to just think about in context of everything else because Legends Arceus is the only game in that top 10 besides Pokemon Yellow at number 9 uh, that is a solo release and it's at number 4. Think about this for a moment. All those other games have the benefit of some people buying two copies, some people buying combo pack, and Legends Arceus is just a single game release. It obviously brings the question on whether or not we should still be getting that duality release of Pokemon games. I understand obviously the link cable stuff back in the day, and I guess there's still the idea that we want to push trades and online things where some Pokemon are exclusive to different versions. I suppose I understand it on, under the surface, but reality is it's just been something they've done for so long, and I think the sales of Pokemon Legends Arceus, at least these early indicators, are showing that, you know what, maybe we don't need to do that anymore. But also, it could just be that this game is so unique and so fire and so hype that it really doesn't matter. I uh, didn't need two different versions. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that two version Pokemon thing and the sales, at least of Pokemon Legends Arceus so far, down below. Uh, we're not gonna talk about our opinions on the game just yet. Uh, I will be giving a um, final impressions video at some point this week, however. So look forward to that because I don't really do that for a lot of games, but I do want to talk about this one in depth at some point this week. Now here's an interesting one. So Mario Kart 64 on Nintendo Switch Online and even back on the Virtual Console has had one significant issue. You couldn't use ghost data in the time trial. So normally what would happen is you could do, you could complete a race, complete a lap, and you could save ghost data and then race against your ghost to try to beat your best times and see the tricks and the paths that that ghost took. Originally, in case you forgot, it was a really neat feature of the original Mario Kart 64 back on the N64, but obviously that data was always saved on a controller pack uh, and yeah, obviously controller packs aren't a thing on Wii Virtual Console, aren't a thing on, well, Nintendo Switch Online. Even though we do have an N64 controller that you could buy, well, could buy, I don't, can't find the damn thing anymore. Uh, you, they blocked it off so you couldn't actually plug in any of the old accessories. So without the controller pack, the ghost data didn't work. And this was really weird because they've added save states and added the ability to save the game locally. But for some reason, this particular thing was never fixed in Mario Kart 64. And it was obviously assumed that it must be a pretty complicated fix for it not to have been done. Well, well, <laughs> Not so. Um, a Switch hacker posted on Twitter a fix, and here it is. It says, for all the ones who are bored and like to hack Nintendo 64 Switch online, here's how to enable controller pack in the config file for the game. This should be how it's done. SI device underscore pack type colon controller pack. Feel free to test my research. So far, it's only given me evidence that it's working, but I don't have a hacked switch to test. And the thing is, other people decided to test this out. They went in and changed the code, and yep, it works, and you're seeing footage of it right now. 
That's how simple it is. A little one line code fix. And Nintendo has yet to do it. Um, people like Spawnwave have actually gone in to check with Modern Vintage Gamer, who is a programmer as well, and asked him, is it really that easy? And he said, yeah, it's really that easy. And he's surprised, obviously, that people weren't talking about this sooner because there's been a lot of talk about how much care Nintendo's giving and how they've updated Ocarina of Time's water to be a bit better, the fog effect to be better. But like, this is a one line change in code that Nintendo could do and they have it and it would fix one of the key features of mario kart 64. so uh, again does this mean nintendo's lazy i, I don't know it, it's hard to throw around the terms lazy without understanding what's going on behind the scenes but i will say that it does seem like something that could have been fixed and has been known about for a long time uh and just never bothered to give a crap to do it it's a feature in the game one code line fix and the thing is if you do it on a hack switch Every time you restart the game, it will actually um, wipe it. So you have to redo it again. However, there is a workaround. It does seem to save in save state. So if you load a save state of the game, if you had that line of code in there, it will still be there. So that'll save you a little time there if you are using a hack switch. But still, I find this to be just be utterly fascinating that it's such a simple fix for a key feature in a game. And Nintendo just hasn't bothered to do it. Um, maybe now that it's getting publicized nintendo will go in and fix it that that's obviously the grand hope in us talking about it but man it definitely isn't a good look for nintendo when it's such a simple fix for a key feature of one of your most popular games on your online service our third story is well i'm sorry wood i gotta do it beat em ups partnered with satisfy grip last year to come out with a beat em ups version of their grip for the nintendo switch oled it's really the same as their other version for the switch oled except this one's obviously yellow different colors has the beat em ups logo and even wood hawkers signature on it so it was a very special collectible piece and it's been sold out pretty close to heat when he announced i think it took about a month for it to sell out and yeah it's starting to arrive now we knew back when you ordered it that it wasn't going to be coming anytime soon because it you know hadn't gone into full manufacturing just yet and obviously satisfy wanted to wait for the switch oled to actually come out so they could double check all their dimensions and make sure everything's fine and it takes a while when you're trying to get a quality grip although again it is just plastic so while it's a really nice grip it's not exactly expensive to make and that's neither here nor there. We've talked about different grips on this channel before. But here's the thing. I got nothing wrong with the Satisfy grip, even though you can't dock it. It is what it is. If you don't use dock mode and you're just handheld only, who cares? You don't have to ever take it out. And it's super comfortable. Here's the problem. People that ordered the beat-em-ups version of this grip have started to receive their grips. Except they're not the beat-em-ups version. They're just the standard white version this actually has uh happened uh, with one of our friends nintendo academy put up a video and he's extremely disappointed that he spent money and ordered the special edition literally the day it was announced and did not receive that and instead received the other version he's obviously going to be emailing and talking to satisfy about this and trying to get it rectified but it's really hard when the it's sold out and it's really hard to see that beat em ups and, and you know woodhawker over there partner with satisfy and this is what's happening is this on beat em ups is it his fault well no but it is a product that could hurt his brand when satisfy is failing to deliver on the promise of the orders if you order a beat em ups version of the satisfy grip that's what you should get now you could say this was just a one-off mistake except i've now heard for more than a dozen people that this has happened. Satisfy clearly was unable to fulfill all of the orders for beat em ups Satisfy Grip and instead thought they could just sneakily fill in with their standard version for the Switch OLED and hope that nobody would be the wiser, which is kind of weird considering it's a completely different color and the whole reason people are buying it is because of the endorsement by beat em ups there's no real reason to buy that beat em ups version over the other one except that you really want that beat em ups version and you wanted to support wood hawker which i don't blame you for wanting to he seems like a genuinely good dude i don't know him personally i've talked to him i even tried to message and talk to him before i talked about this today but the unfortunate truth is that well people seem to be getting scammed now i sincerely hope that satisfy 
does do right by the people who legitimately ordered this and get this fixed. And I would love to see Woodhawker um, actually address this, at least on social media, if not in a video, um, acknowledging that this happened, apologizing for it, um, and doing what he can to get right. Because none of us can talk directly to Satisfy, although he supposedly can. I obviously hope this isn't obviously a grander uh, scam. Uh, that would suck. Uh, but I, I, I'm giving Wood the benefit of the doubt here that this was obviously not, not on him at all and completely unsatisfied. And this does obviously bring the question if YouTubers should be partnering with any company to create self-branded stuff um, that isn't verifiable. Like, you know, we have this merch like Hype Responsibly and before I ever advertised it to you guys, I ordered it as a normal customer, not under my account, just to make sure the product actually arrives. And it did, and it arrived in exactly the way that it was supposed to arrive. Same with this hat. So like, I don't advertise things that are gonna have our branding on it if the companies we partner with for that aren't going to deliver. Now, obviously he had every reason to believe Satisfy would deliver, and I'm sure some of you guys are rocking some of those beat em ups grips right now. But it does appear they took too many orders, and it does appear that instead of canceling orders, they're sending out the other grip. Kind of not what should be happening, to be honest. So, I don't know. It, it, it's a little bit of a controversy out there floating out there. I wanted to address it because I know some of you guys out there have ordered your grips and are still waiting. So, if you end up getting the wrong one, uh, I, I'm not really sure what to say except the contact satisfy. Um, I, I don't think beat em ups can help you out, but uh, it sucks, man. It sucks. It really hurts trust, you know? Even if I don't think it's his fault. <clears throat> this is one of those things you gotta be absolutely sure of when you're partnering with companies, is that they're not gonna screw over your fan base. Getting back into more fun news, GameIndustry.biz has actually reported that Nintendo Switch has been as the number one selling system in all of Europe. Now this is really interesting because it's really hard to gather all of the data, but there's a company that actually does just that at the end of every year, and Switch was the number one seller in Europe. We already have Switch confirmed as the number one seller in Japan and the United States for 2021. That means that the three major territories that Nintendo wants to win, they did. Now obviously the fourth emerging territory would probably be something like China, uh, but again, we don't have lot of data for that it runs through Tencent and it's just it's one of those things that I'm not sure if we'll ever get numbers it might always be included in other for Nintendo sales I suppose but I don't know that we're ever gonna hear exact figures for that territory what I do know though is that this is absolutely incredible to see switch at the top now a lot of people think it's at the top because of supply constraints specifically to PlayStation 5 let alone also the Xbox Series X which could have obviously ate into people buying switch and instead of buying those platforms so availability is obviously one of the greatest strengths of any platform. Uh, they even say this in sports, you know, that like people want to knock my Milwaukee Bucks for winning the championship last year because of injuries. And reality is the greatest ability is availability and that helped the Bucks win a title and that helped Switch obviously dominate the charts. When you're more available than the others, you're more likely to actually get more sales than the others. This isn't always the case, of course, if you're creating an item nobody actually wants to buy. So yeah, obviously people actually want to own a Switch and want to play games. But uh, yeah, this is obviously really good news for Nintendo. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what the official figures are going to be when they drop their latest financial report. Obviously it should be over 100 million, but how much higher than 100 million will it be? And obviously the end of fiscal year report is the big one. That's when we find out how many units it actually sold in the last 12 month period, but still really good stuff here. And yeah, the next financial report's cool because it's gonna be the entire holiday period. So Nintendo strikes again and has removed 1300 soundtracks from a very popular YouTube channel that put up Nintendo soundtracks. Now, some of you guys might go, that's well within Nintendo's right. You shouldn't just be uploading straight up soundtracks like that. When Nintendo does let us use soundtracks in some ways, I am allowed to put Nintendo music in the background of my videos, but that's in the background of a original content, right? So Nintendo doesn't mind if you're reacting to trailers or using footage, as long as there's something original happening in that video. Just straight up uploading soundtracks isn't original. People you might even consider it stealing an illegal distribution. And technically Nintendo is well within their copyright means to take out all of these soundtracks. Uh, it's interesting though, because this happened one other time to this YouTube channel back in 2020. And here's what he said back then to try to quell some of the rising storm saying, why are you even doing this? You're evil, you're getting rich off of Nintendo. He said this, 
I see a lot of assumptions being made by some of you with extreme words against me. Let me clarify again that I do not monetize my videos and do not profit from them. I do realize that doesn't justify uploading the content. I'm also not angry or surprised that Nintendo is doing this, but I do think it is a bit disappointing. There is hardly an alternative. If Nintendo thinks this is what needs to be done to set an example, I will let them take down the channel. It's their content after all. So he's not even arguing against Nintendo doing this. In fact, he expected it. But the problem we have here on why these channels exist in the first place is there is no alternative. People would love to spend money on Nintendo's music. They don't make it available. Very few sparing soundtracks have ever been made available to purchase physically, let alone actually available on iTunes or Spotify or Pandora or you know Google, Amazon Music. Like literally, it's impossible to officially buy most of Nintendo's music. It's a, it's almost impossible to stream most of it. Even if you want to argue Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's still a very limited, often edited and remixed collection of music, which is amazing and awesome. Awesome, but not the original soundtracks for every game like if you want to listen to the entire full soundtrack of breath of the wild good freaking luck finding it in any legal form to do nintendo doesn't provide us a way they have this plethora this cornucopia of music just sitting out there that millions of gamers would love to even give nintendo money for and they don't offer a way to do it so that's why channels like this exist so when we do sit there and we look why are you doing this nintendo's in their right yada yada it's not about that it's about nintendo not offering a different way if you've ever listened to nintendo music online i guarantee you you listened to what was an illegal copyrighted uploaded track by somebody else because there's no other way to listen to this stuff now yeah some of you do have some of the sparing soundtracks that have released over the years that you've been able to buy but still that's not even close to the full collection of nintendo music so yeah it's very disappointing to see nintendo doing this while they don't offer any alternatives because they're basically saying you're not allowed to do this but also we're not doing it either <laughs> kind of a weird sentiment to take now it'd be different if nintendo was planning to do it at some point you know like they took out the metroid 2 remake because they were working on a metroid 2 remake but nintendo has been doing this for decades and they still have yet to offer anything and i doubt that they will and it's so weird because it's like you're leaving money on the table people would be willing to pay money to listen to your stuff nintendo if you put it on spotify it's just free money to add to your bank account that you're already not making why wouldn't you do it I don't, I, I'll never understand Nintendo sometimes. Now our final story is a bit of a fun story about a fan project. Uh, this fan project was created by um, Rowan Link over on um, YouTube. And he has been working in Unreal Engine 5 and decided to remake Ocarina of Time's Lake Hylia in Unreal Engine 5. And here it is. Now, obviously, it's extremely gorgeous, very cinematic, and he did it in a very cinematic way. In fact, if you go watch the full video, you're gonna hear some amazingly composed original music for it that just blows my mind. I mean, the music to me is almost more impressive than the actual visuals, because obviously I'm always gonna have issues with a lot of these fan things, you know, Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 5, watching Link clip through everything, and you know, it, it's, all, it's never perfect, but man, this looks gorgeous, and it's just like a single person working on this project. Extremely Extremely talented to be able to do this. Unreal Engine 5 is, you know, a beast of an engine to use. Obviously, it takes a beast of a computer to work on it. And you can even see as he's running through it, sometimes there's some uh, limits on the, 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 the distance. So, like, the foliage is loading in, and you can kind of see it loading in because, again, it's beefy to run this engine. Uh, and, you know, who knows what he's actually making this on. So, um, it is incredible. It is gorgeous. It obviously makes you wonder what Nintendo could do uh, if they had, you know, better hardware out there and, and cared to do push visuals in this direction now look i obviously think breath of the wild and breath of the wild 2 are gorgeous in their own right but this is obviously something very very different and i just would like to see nintendo explore it more and more uh, but one person pulled this off i'd like to see what nintendo could do with a team of people working in unreal unreal engine 5 maybe on their next platform i i, I think like monolith soft could do something special like this with a game um, so we'll just have to wait and see but yeah it's a really cool fan project and i just wanted to show it off in the full link to watch the whole entire thing including the amazing music in it down below. Oh, we did it. We made it. We ended our incredible journey together through the news. Did you see it all? All six stories? 
Was it as fun for you as it was for me? I hope so. If you enjoyed this video, drop that like, hit that subscribe button, but that's a given. What's not a given is what are you going to be doing today? No, seriously, tell me, what, what the hell are you doing today? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be playing some Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm going to be making some videos, doing some homework, being a boss. What about you? Maybe you're going to eat some, some breakfast, some lunch, some dinner, some brunch. What time is it right now? Nate, have you entered the top? What? This is Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.